Hey everybody, Craig Cottle as a naughty professor again, coming to you today to show you how to tie the clove hitch, both to put over an apparatus or to tie around an apparatus. A very useful hitch that we're going to show today, the clove hitch. Yeah, the clove hitch is a very useful hitch that you can utilize in boating, paddling, uh, farming, outdoorsmanship, survival, uh, bushcrafting, any number of things. I'm going to show you how to utilize it as well as how to tie it two different ways. In essence, what we want to cover is being able to utilize the clove hitch in such a way that you can put it over a post. And then if you have some sort of pole where you can't put it over it, we're going to show you how to tie it to that pole as well. So glad you're here. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the clove hitch where we tie it independent of anything over here in the air and then we slide it over top of a post, a tree, in this case a dead tree. I could actually slide this over a bumper and oftentimes I do that. I'll make this clove hitch, slide it over my bumper to tie a load down to my truck. But in essence all you're going to do, and I'm going to turn so you can see, I take my right hand, put it over top of the left and that makes a loop. I take my right hand, put it over top of the left, that makes another loop. And I take that second loop, this one, and put it behind the first. That's my clove hitch right there. Now all I need to do is slide this over top of my post, my bumper, or whatever I'm utilizing, and I can pull it tight by pulling on the two ends. Now I have a clove hitch. Now what a lot of people will tell you, and they're right, is that if I pull on this, this loosens the clove hitch so it's not a really secure knot. Because it's not a knot, it's a hitch. But in essence what I want to do to make this more secure is just take my working end of my rope, tie a half hitch, and now it's secure and it can't come untied. And the beauty of this is that all the constriction happens, the tightness happens on the clove hitch, and this remains loose but secure. So when it comes time to untie it, I can easily untie the half hitch, pull on one side of the clove hitch, you can see that starts to loosen it, pull on the other side of the clove hitch, that starts to loosen it, and then it's real easy like to slide that right back off. So what happens though if we're going to tie to a tree such as this or a post on a barn or something of that nature and we can only tie in the middle we can't go over top of the end of the post. In essence what we have to do is we take our working end, bring it around the tree, take it under, bring it back around, and then that loop that's created right there I bring that rope back through. What you're going to note, if you get it right, is once you pull it tight, there's constriction from the main portion of the rope that's pushing against two parallel lines. That's the two parallel lines I'm talking about right there. In essence, what you have is a secure clove hitch. If, again, you want to make it more secure, then take this around and tie your half hitch. How about we take a look at some usefulness for the clove hitch. Number one. Let's assume that this is much smaller because it's hard to show this on camera. But what I want to do is show you how I could use a toggle or a handle or something of that nature where I'm using the first way that I showed you the clove hitch. Left, right, second goes in behind. In essence, I slide that right over top of this piece again because I have the ability to do that. I have the end. Dress it up. And if I want to, to make it a little bit more secure, I'll tie my half hitch on it. Now the beauty of this, what I have here, is if I have something big like this, then I have a handle I can swing off of into a river if I wanted to. Uh, I could have a nice seat if I wanted to, to swing for the kids. Uh, but the bushcraft usefulness is several fold. Number one, I can make this much smaller, and I have to give a shout out to my friend Clint Javoin because he's the one that showed me this. But uh, you basically make a small toggle that'll fit inside your water bottle. Let's say you've got a water bottle that you're heating up water to boil it to cleanse it. You stick this down in the water bottle, let it open, and when you pull it back up, the ends of the toggle, and again, this is a larger version so you can see it on camera better, but the smaller version of this goes into the water bottle and then comes back up and you don't have to grab the water bottle with your hands. It's pretty slick. Uh, another option for this is the same setup right here for use in a pedal trap. In essence, if I have the V on the ground, and I'm gonna set this up for you, if I have a V on the ground, I wanna put this under to set up the trap itself, it'll fit very nicely, and this holds the rope to the toggle. So here's the V. 
I'm using something dead for the purposes, but for our purposes here today, but if I were to sharpen this up, and again, I'm making this big, so it's easy for you guys to see this on camera. But once that is made, I've got a V, my toggle could come through, and I have that clove hitch sitting there to make sure that it is stationary on my pedal trap. So watch the video on the pedal trap and you'll see how all that's done, but this is a big version of it. Let's say you got that favorite piece of gear that you can slide your clove hitch over, like let's say your favorite tomahawk, and you wanna make sure that it's secure. You tie that clove hitch the half hitch to it so you know that it's secure and the beauty of this is that you now have a secure way to let your gear down over a cliff outside of a cave into a shelter whatever it is that you might want to lower a piece of gear into because the beauty of it is if it, you put a lot of weight on it maybe you even want to lower a log or a rock or whatever reason you're wanting to lower something you have the clove hitch to hold it, and you have the half hitch to secure it, and then in essence, real easy like, they come unloose. And it doesn't matter how much weight you put on it, the half hitch is gonna come loose real easy. Once that half hitch again comes loose, all you do to loosen on your load, pull on the right, pull on the left, and everything starts to fall apart, which is good to untie this hitch. Now we wanna secure it to a bumper or a bumper hitch or whatever it might be. We make our clove hitch, and again, this is where we have the hitch where it'll go around the end of it. Put it onto our hook, pull everything tight. Now again, if I start to pull a load on this side of it, it's gonna come loose because that's pulling the tension off. So I just take my half hitch to secure it, and that fixes it. And again, the beauty of this is it doesn't matter how much I pull with this truck, is the half hitch is gonna come off loose. And again, once the half hitch comes off loose, Pull from the right, pull from the left, and everything starts to loosen up. Now I know I've shown you several ways to tie up a tarp. Let's say we're gonna build a ridge line or something of that nature. And this is just one more way we can do it. We can tie that clove hitch, secure it with a half hitch. And then once we set that up, we can then pull tension over to another tree, which I'm getting ready to do. And then I'm gonna show you another real important use for a clove hitch that seems to make everybody really happy in my survival classes. So this is a common problem in survival classes, bushcrafting, or just for people who want to set a tarp up and get out of the rain on a hike or whatever, is that you set up a bomb-proof shelter, you know how to put your corners in, you know how to tie your prusik so you can keep this tight or loose, whatever you need it to do. However, once you get this tight, you don't have a lot of headroom here. So a clove hitch with a small rock or an acorn or a hickory nut or something of that nature is gonna work exceptionally well to pull the head of this back out so you got a lot more room in this area. So I'm gonna show you how to use a clove hitch to do that. We're gonna to have to move around so you can see that side of it, so that's where we're going. Here's our issue. You're at the back of the tarp now looking in on it and you can see that it's, there's a lot of swag. No matter how much I pull that, it's, there's a certain amount of swag that's in there, especially if there's gonna be rain or snow on it, which is just a given if you're gonna be outdoors very much at all. And this is another reason I like the Prusiks. I can loosen up my tarp real easy like, go to the center of it, and all I've done is place a rock in the center of the tarp. I take that first clove hitch I taught you to tie, right over left, right over left, the second one goes behind the first. I put that around the rock. Once I get all that in there, I pull this tight. And what the rock serves, to do is now that I've got that in there, it won't pull through the tarp. So when I pull my Prusik back out to put tension on it, I can then go out to here, pull tension way up on my tarp, tie this off to this tree right here or a branch that's overhanging, and then I'm gonna have a lot more headroom there inside my tarp. So yeah, that's a real simple look at the clove hitch. Pretty simple, actually. Uh, always utilizing hitches where you attach to something else, whereas knots are basically where the rope is attaching itself to itself. 
So in essence, that is a few uses on the bushcraft. Obviously, you can utilize this for mooring boats. That's so common, I didn't want to put that in there. But take the clove hitch, put it over a post, holds the boat steady. Uh, there's a number of things that look similar to this knot. There's the bag hitch, which is how you tie bags together so you can untie them real easy. I utilized that on the farm for years with bags of corn that we were feeding cattle, as well as when we were uh, tagging and, and uh, banding cattle, uh, we did the same thing by tying the legs up. I think I'll show that in another video because it's a real useful little hitch, uh, the bag hitch, and utilize it for that. But with that said, that's the clove hitch. I'm glad you joined us. Uh, as you can see now that I've got the rope pulling through the center, utilizing the clove hitch right in the center of the tarp, I've got a lot more headroom in here. What used to be a place that could hold two or three might hold five or six if we had to get in out of the rain in this situation with plenty of headroom to spare. So that's Craig Cottle with Nature Alliance School. I really appreciate you checking us out. Do what you can to follow us over on Carbon TV. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really appreciate that. If you'll look in the description below to the blog piece, I'll show you some places where you can buy some paracord. Always anything that we have links for, if you're buying stuff from our links, you're helping us support and do what it is that we do, and we cannot thank you enough for that. Always, come on, join in. Let's learn together.